Good morning and welcome to what looks like is going to be a beautiful day on Utopia Farms. It's bright and sunny. Temperature is going pretty warm today. So we're going to be doing a lot of uh, outdoor work and moving sheep and stuff today. So couldn't have picked a better day for it, I think. So I had to... Uh, stop my morning greeting really quickly when I said it was a beautiful day because just as I said that I looked towards the road and there was Buddy in the middle of the road and a car was coming and I thought oh my god what a way to start the day but he had crossed the road and he's in the field but yeah you hate things like that but he's okay um, but I wish he wouldn't uh, I wish he'd just stay at the barn anyway let's go on inside and see what happened in there today so today is the day of moving sheep. We're going to be moving sheep from barn to barn and we're going to be uh, setting up all kinds of different groups. So this is the lambing barn, the old heifer barn. We've For, for now we've just pushed the, the pregnant ewes over to one side so we can bring the open dorsets over here right now. And we're going to try run them across the yard in the mud, which they don't like. So we'll see how this goes. This is going to be attempt number one, moving the sheep. Come on, Ben. Hopefully there's only one attempt, but sometimes there can be a lot. Go on. Go on. Get out. Get out. Go on. Ben, stay here. Stay here. Come on, Ben, here, Katie. Ben, good boy. Ben? Ben! Ben? Ben? Okay, they're out of the barn. They didn't want to leave the barn, so I had to turn the camera off for a second as I chased them a little more. They don't like the mud. Got him to make the corner, which yeah. is always a tough one too. Now we gotta yeah. hope that they make the turn and don't go towards the road. I'm on the okay. Man, okay. Okay, some of them have seen the door. The key is you want to keep sheep together. If anyone breaks off, uh, the whole pack will disappear. But if they stay together like this, they'll all follow each other. So uh, if they're flock animals, you want them to stay in a flock. That one is afraid to cross the water. She did it. <laughs> So they're all in here now. They're beside the ram pen. So those rams will help uh, these guys ovulate. Uh, it'll be like teaser rams at the gate there. Uh, the, being close to rams uh, tends to make the girls ovulate. And then by the time we put the rams in, these girls will be ready to go. And this is where we'll be shearing them and where they're gonna be bred. But uh, there's going to be more movements in this barn later on today. Right now we got to go move another group. So we'll leave these girls here for now. Now we're going to try move the replacements over to the barn where the white sheep were. Again, the, the obstacle here is mud, snow, and water, which they don't like. He's too close. Sheep don't like that much pressure. Max, back! 
That's yeah. You want them at least uh, 10, 20 feet. Katie, Max, good boy. These girls are doing a really good job. And it's like someone told them which pen they are going in. Good dogs, Max. Good boy. Good girl, Katie. They'll be real happy with this pen because it's really big. Until we put some lambs in here. Now the biggest worry we have is that uh, no rams jump over. There. Yeah, they're gonna love this pen, but uh, now the, now our biggest worry is rams jumping over. And if that happens, then the rams are out of here. No, well, this is a bread time. <laughs> if they caught, you'd get it, they'd get the white ones. Oh, and actually some of these white ones do have to go over to the other barn. But we'll sort them later. Right now we're just moving the big groups. But there's a few of these white sheep that are going to go in that breeding group. And this uh, pretty girl here, the cross, she's a Dorset cross. She's going to go in the breeding group too. She's very pretty. Hi, honey. Yeah, they're going to like this pen. It's much more open. Maybe we'll open the curtain for them. Okay, so part one was moving the pregnant ewes over to one side of the barn. Part two was bringing the fall lammers over to the barn. Part three was bringing the replacement ewes into the other coverall. So this will be part four. We got to open the back wall here. And this is Suffolk group five. They're going to be moved to the back now and we're gonna have Suffolk group six in here shortly. So we gotta move that wall, open this wall, and we gotta bring some creep feeders in here and set up a creep pen for these guys. So I've got the gate open. This is a really young group of lambs, so we gotta move very carefully in this group so that nobody gets injured, especially when the skid steer comes in. The good thing is when you open a new gate, usually everyone wants to go through and explore. The lambs will be the hardest to get over because they don't understand what's going on. So we'll go round up some lambs. Okay, I got them all over here. Now I'm waiting for Arnie to come with the good steer on the feeders, which is kind of scary. Well, on the go, we decided that we're only going to put one creep feeder back here. And by the time they're big enough to eat off the one creep feeder, we'll remove this gate and join them and set up the big creep area at the front again. We figured that would be easier than bringing two feeders back here. Um, and running through all these little lambs. So we're just gonna set up a small creep pen until this group is all well established and the other group is well established that's coming in here. And then uh, like in the barn yesterday, we will set up a massive creep area to join them all together. But like I've told you before, we, we start the pens off in groups of 30 ewes and their lambs. We found that to be the magic number for ewes and lambs adjusting well to uh, large group conditions. And once they're well established in the groups of 30 and everybody is for sure recognizing their mom and eating well and stuff like that, then we take down the wall and join the groups together into a, a big group of 60 youth. So as we wait for Arnie to come, he's getting the creep uh, gate and another panel for the creep area. I thought we'd sit and have a look at the lambs in this pen now. One is nursing. And uh, this lamb here is 
our pet lamb, Badger's ram lamb. And she's got a ewe lamb in here that was around a minute ago. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. And we got, I guess uh, we just moved. Everybody wants to nurse now because it's a, it's a change and a stressful thing for the lambs. So they go to mom for comfort, like I've said before. Just to know that it's okay. Everybody's at it. This one here is particularly cute. Come on, let's see your face. Hey, buddy. You lamb. And that you there with the speckly face and the two lambs. She's one that we kept uh, last year because of her cute markings. She's a Suffolk Rideau cross. And she has twin lambs on her. Anything you cross with a Suffolk is a nice cross. We always say that Suffolk sheep improve any breed, and we do believe that. So all the speckly little ones you see in here would be crosses. Oh, and he's a really pretty cross. You have a very pretty lamb. He had to be a boy. So I went to Best Buy yesterday uh, to see where my new phone was, and yeah, it's still coming from Samsung, but um, we were talking about my camera flashing and doing this uh, dark and light thing. They can't fix that, they said, but uh, he said it's a sign that my sensor's going, so it doesn't know how to adjust for the lighting conditions anymore. So it's it's really not me, and uh, do bear with me until I do get my new phone because uh, I'm hoping that uh, the new phone will make the new videos so much better. It's unfortunate about that. And you're such a pretty girl. Mom and daughter. Oh, and there is a you in here. Big fat 178s in here. Big fat 178s in here. This is an example of a you. They're all fed the same, but she was obviously, obviously never left the trough because she has twin lambs and you would swear she still had triplets in her. I'm guessing that's all fat, not me. No, she's a big body sheep. She is, but she's, she's obese for some reason. Everybody else in here looks in great shape though. I told you to do it, you chickened out. I figured while Arnie was in here with the forks and uh, there is no lambs here yet, he could clean up this mess that was here. This is going in a different cover also. And 
these gates um, are extremely, uh, it's for our chute and they're extremely heavy. Not like in the UK where they make them out of aluminum, which is fantastic. We use uh, sheet metal here. Okay, the next step in today's movement is taking this load of lambs over to the coverall in the new pen we just set up. So we got the lambs and ewes sorted and we're waiting for Arnie to come with the trailer and we'll load them up. We got the load of lambs on there. Okay, we got everyone on board. Now they're being backed up to their new pen. Took a little longer to get them on than usual because one group turned around and came back down. And this is a really big, uh, normally we'd bring over 10 and I think there's 16 in this group, so. But uh, they'll be happy to be in here. Much nicer barns for them. Here come the moms. pregnant sheep over first we'll we're, well you want to move the white ones first or no so we're gonna want like uh, 10 suffix or 12 suffix Stay there, Ben. Stay there. We got two. Here comes some more. There you go. girl come on you couldn't you couldn't do that come on there's always one who has to cause trouble for you and here comes the next group in a nice orderly fashion hopefully These are the last ones to lamb. Is that all of them? This is it. Just a tiny little starter flock. And the last job on movement day is uh, opening the gate at the back of the barn. And now all these white sheep will have full reign of this barn. They will have access to both sides. having a look at them. And they gotta figure out that there is another side. Okay, that's enough for around the corner. There, now they're discovering it. 
If you don't show them, it can take them a while. There we go. Now, this is their new home. This is where shearing will happen. And this is where lambing will happen. And this is where breeding will happen. Last group to go over to the coverall for a while. This is the bobble babies, some of them. A lot of triplets in this group. biggest lambs of all and he's a triplet. the second coverall that is full now with ewes and lambs. So before I sign off today, I thought I'd give you an update. So this is one pregnant group. They're all looking nice and pregnant, but no one's lambing right now. And this is the other side of the pregnant group. This is all we have left. And they all look big, but uh, it's quiet today. Nobody lamb today. We have.
have the Dorsets all in the heifer barn now. They've all settled in. They're all quiet. Uh, you'll see the odd Suffolk in this group. Um, they're just ones that lost their lambs or something happened uh, during the last breeding season. So we just put them in this group because it was an open group. But um, when we go through and uh, put the rams with these guys, we will be pulling those Suffolks out. And there's Ferdinand looking at um, his future ladies. Very soon, Ferdy, very soon. And the big surprise today, there's a lot of screaming going on, but that's because we released the triplets. And the triplets are screamers. Suffolks are not screamers, but uh, anything with white sheep in it are screamers. And the big surprise is, as you walk down the jugs here, I'm sure you're seeing it. I know I am. I know Arnie is. We got one ewe and her twin lambs in the jugs. Every other one is empty. Hasn't been this way since December. So on that note, we're going to say good night or good afternoon. Here it is right now. And hope you join us again tomorrow for another episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.